Welcome back to Switch to Linux and another Distro Wars. Well, today we want to have a look at two kind of semi-rolling type releases, Fedora and OpenSUSE. These are two distributions that uh, they really focus on uh, about annual big point releases that are valid only for a fairly short period of time. Then it's expected to upgrade those. And then... Um, Basically, every time you get the upgrade, you are going to get the latest packages. So it's not definitely not as rolling as Arch, not quite as fast of a release development as Ubuntu, but certainly a lot faster than Debian. Fedora generally focuses on a bleeding edge rolling release. OpenSUSE, the Leap version, I should say anyway, is focuses a lot more on your stability. So you can think of it as a faster moving Arch. Okay, now. Uh, with that being said, there is a complete rolling version of OpenSUSE as well. We're not going to be looking at that one today. We're just going to be having a look at the Leap because the release schedule is fairly similar to that of Fedora. So let's go ahead and have a look at the website. So Fedora is getfedora.org. You can grab a workstation or a server. As far as your installation processes, Fedora does give you the ability to install more desktop environments out of the box. Uh, we do have, uh, the default generally is GNOME, and it does honestly work better with GNOME than it does with most other desktop environments as far as installing extra codecs and repositories and things like that. You can go ahead and grab the, the download now button, or you can grab just the, the live key here. Pretty much just gets you the ability to install your uh, it gives you the ability to install your, your GNOME desktop. Now there is, if you hunt around, come down, find the, but wait, there's more. No, they're not trying to sell you anything. What they're doing down here with this, but wait, there's more, is they are giving you alternative downloads. We have uh, BitTorrents, but we also have things like the everything, testing images, Rawhide for experts only. I'm actually using the everything, which is actually a net installer that's going to it's going to be a little bit smaller to download, and then I choose which desktop environments I want to go. And you have GNOME, KDE, there's Cinnamon, XFCE, Mate, Budgie, variety of different desktop options to choose from. Whereas OpenSUSE only gives us KDE, which is its primary, and GNOME, and I think there's a, a minimal as well. So those are kind of your options. As far as their release schedules, uh, you kind of have to read between the lines and look at all the different release schedules. But in effect, they release a new version about every year. And then when that new one's out, you should upgrade to the next version within the next six months. And that actually is very similar for the lifetime on OpenSUSE Leap. However, they do have major releases expected to be maintained for at least 36 months. So about three years on the 42, 15, etc. But if you get down to the point releases, these are our minor releases. These are released annually, and it's expected that when a new release is out, it's expected that you're going to upgrade within six months. They will have a maintenance cycle of 18 months. So your leap version of OpenSUSE is a little bit shorter on the point releases. You do get the three year out of the major releases. Now, as we did say, we do have a tumbleweed, which is a rolling distro release. And uh, we're not going to be looking at the rolling distros. Maybe we can do tumbleweed versus an arch to rolling distros another time. We're going to be looking, though, at leap, which is more uh, closely related to Fedora. And we are on Leap 15.2, and I just did a review of the KDE version of this uh, recently. However, what we're going to do here is boot on into our system. So let's go ahead and jump at Fedora first, and uh, we'll show you what we have with Fedora, and then we will jump into our um, OpenSUSE afterwards. All right, so here we are on the Fedora login screen, and uh, when you click on in here, you can enter in your password. We do have some options. They note that they did move the change desktop uh, um, environment, etc., down to the lower right. We can go into GNOME, which is going to be Wayland. We have a GNOME Classic, and we have a GNOME on X. So you have that as an option as well. We're just going to go ahead and keep it on our basic one, which Fedora is, Fedora is if you want to run GNOME, I think Fedora is absolutely the best version 
it, it seems to run GNOME better. Even in, here in a virtual machine, Fedora GNOME is the only one that, that I have found that Wayland does not do goofy things. Now, your major advantages you're going to have with Fedora is everything, including your desktop environment, is the current versions. So we are going to be running here on, um, if I can click on my about, there we are. Uh, we are going to be running on GNOME 36, uh, 336.3 versus, I think we only get like 334 over on uh, over there on OpenSUSE. The reason for that is that Fedora is a point release bleeding edge and OpenSUSE is a point release stability. So Fedora is in that respect sort of quasi closer to Arch, whereas OpenSUSE is quasi closer to Debian where it focuses more on the stability. As far as the basic applications outside the desktop environment, you're not going to find a lot of differences. Here on Fedora, we do have your standard release of Firefox. So you can see my massively annoying uh, URL bar because our Firefox version is going to be the latest version, 78.01, whereas OpenSUSE, we're going to be running the ESR version of Firefox because, again, stability. All right, so over here, here is the applications. Now, I will note that the everything installer that I use does give you the option of software. So I actually had to install LibreOffice. Uh, I had to click to install the utilities. So that's why the everything installer for Fedora, it actually gives you the option of everything or even the option of really nothing. So this one is going to be a little bit uh, less, uh, less bloated as it were, because the only thing on here is your basic GNOME tools and LibreOffice because I actually installed LibreOffice. I had the option to do other, uh, other things in the software installs as well. We'll have a look at the software center in a bit. I want to go ahead and have a look at our uh, LibreOffice. I want to see if we are all configured. So we're running 6442 on LibreOffice. Let's see if our spieling cheekers are set up right. And it does appear our spieling cheekers work. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. Uh, and then let's also see if we have plugins for synonyms, which we do. So we have our plugins for synonyms, things like that. All right. So there is your... Um, your LibreOffice build. As far as any configurations, um, your software, sure, let's go ahead and go shopping. Do you want to enable third-party repositories? This is going to be some extra software that is not necessarily the open source philosophy. You can enable or disable it. You can also enable it later by going into your software repositories, and you can turn those on over here. So you can see what we have over here. Uh, so here's, let's go ahead and install our third-party repositories. And let's see if there's anything else we might want to do here. All right. So we'll click the enabled. Here is what we have. And pretty much any software, if we're looking for it, um, it's going to have the version. Well, it's not going to have Caden Live in, in Fedora because that's actually going to be in the um, uh, more in your um, is it RPM Fusion? I forget. I don't use Fedora enough, guys. I I, I apologize. There is the uh, the extra uh, extra third party repositories that you can set up with with this. So here's software repositories uh, RPM Fusion. There you go. So you can do RPM Fusion on. Uh, for NVIDIA, you can do it for Steam, you can do it for Google Chrome. That's not RPM, but that's just Google Chrome. So you can actually, if you enable the, the generic RPM uh, repositories, which you can find instructions for that uh, easily online, then um, you will have Fedora pretty much set up with everything that you might want to do. So... So if you just do a brief internet search here for um, enabling your RPM Fusion, it is third party. So it is going to talk about why you want to do it, the procedure to do that. And then that's going to enable you to do, do things like VLC, uh, Caden Live, things like that. So a little bit uh, a little bit more complicated to get things set up. And that's always been a case with Fedora. Is it bad? No, it's not. It's just that Fedora follows a more completely pure FOSS of philosophy. And so it does make you work a little bit harder, which is kind of why I also stand with Linux Mint on their decision with Snaps. It just goes against their philosophy. So that's Fedora in a nutshell. We'll come on back and have a look at OpenSUSE in just a second.
All right, here we are on OpenSUSE, and uh, actually it logged us right in because I have this set. OpenSUSE gives you the ability to set the uh, login automatically, which is the, the default. So let's go ahead and log out and have a look at the login screen, uh, just to have a look at what we're seeing here. So click in on this guy here. You can see we are running an older version of GNOME because the gear for changing your desktop is over here. We have uh, TWM, we have uh, TLE Classic, ICE Window Manager Session, GNOME on X, GNOME, uh, GNOME Classic, and GNOME on presumably Wayland. So let's go ahead and get logged back in there. And uh, hopefully when we get logged back in, we'll be full screen again. There we are. Okay, so uh, out of the box, as I said, we are going to have a slightly older version here of GNOME. You can kind of see that in how, uh, just how the, uh, the layout is here. So we are at 334.4. Again, OpenSUSE focuses more on the stability end, so they do not always put the absolute bleeding edge. Although I will say that every piece of software I've looked at has actually been the latest version for that particular software. So I did poke around with a few different software packages I often use, and the software packages are not old. Just the desktop is, and they do that pretty much just to maintain some degree of stability. You can see here we do not have an insane URL bar on Firefox, and that is because it is actually using the Firefox ESR support rather than the latest version, which gives us a little bit more stability in the long run, which is exactly what OpenSUSE is going for. Uh, I did answer my question as far as what's it going to be shipped with on default on GNOME. It does indeed ship with Evolution, whereas our Plasma version ships with Kmail as your default. We can see the applications um, installed by default. So we have basically your GNOME tools, effectively the same thing I said in my other video about OpenSUSE where we did the previous video looking at... Um, looking at the Plasma version, it gave us all the Plasma tools. In this case, it's giving us all of the GNOME tools. So here's our software center. Let's see if our K applications are available over here. So if I search for Kden Live over here, we can see that we do have the Kden Live video editor and it is the latest version. So if you are needing the K applications without wanting to mess around with things like uh, the RPM Fusion, then OpenSUSE might be the better way to go. We can install VLC out of the box, so you're not gonna be fighting with that at all. So we are gonna have a little bit bigger software repository available to us on OpenSUSE, and you are actually gonna have the latest versions of the applications, just not necessarily the latest versions of the um, uh, of the desktop environment, and that is actually by design. Of course, we also get YAST in uh, in OpenSUSE, which is a very nice system control manager. Now, I am going to stop and pause here. If you did see my other video, you'll see that I was fighting with the printer for a while and could not get that to work. Well, it turns out that there is a uh, there is a package missing on the latest OpenSUSE, which if you install this package, your printers will work. Pretty much printers generally don't want to work without it. This is the GLIBC-32 bit. Install that package on your system and your printers do work. So both of these distribution uses the RPM package management system. So I can go right onto my uh, onto my printer's website, download the printer drivers for Linux directly off of that site, which gave me the brother drivers for the HLL 2380DW, and on both Fedora and OpenSUSE, the printing works and the scanning also works, just utilizing the drivers that they hand us in the um, uh on the manufacturer's website for that printer. So out of the box uh, of the two, which one do I think is better? Well, they're both excellent distributions. They're both going to give you a good rolling distribution. They're both going to be fairly stable. K um, excuse me, Fedora follows a much more strict FOSS philosophy. So you're going to have to fight with it a little bit more if you want your codex, if you want some of the more advanced features, if you're going to want to do the video editing with Caden Live or even play something back on VLC, be prepared to be doing a little bit more work with Fedora to get that up and running. But if you do need the latest bleeding edge on everything, Fedora is going to be the better option. As far as OpenSUSE, you're going to have a better packages out of the box. You're going to have a little bit better user experience, eh, save for that one package you need to install to get the printing working. 
maybe enough if enough people post a bug report, it'll either get added in or something else. So hopefully that'll be something we can get fixed out. Uh, we do have slightly older versions in OpenSUSE. Again, this is for stability of your system. So OpenSUSE might give you a little bit more stability. And I know that uh, Fedora does sometimes have some issues getting everything up and running. OpenSUSE, though, has issues if you do not update it enough. Because I have run into that issue myself where I had an OpenSUSE. It was great. I paused using it for about a month's time so that I could test out something else. I came back to OpenSUSE and it was effectively bricked. That was not a good situation. So those are the things to keep in mind. They're both excellent, latest and greatest, absolutely everything. Fedora, more stability, you definitely want Fedora. Both of them though are good options. More desktop environments, you want Fedora if you're happy with, uh, with GNOME or with um, Plasma, then OpenSUSE are going to be your good options there as well. And you can check the documentation, probably install some other desktop environments on top of those. So with that, guys, let me know which one of these two is your favorite on this edition of Distro Wars. Thanks for the supporters and the patrons on Patreon.com and on ThinkLifeMedia.com who help keep the show running. Thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.